the new ship is at last heading for home. For the first time, she is being sailed by her British officers. They have put away their civvies and donned uniform for the crossing to England. They trained on a simulator of Oriana's bridge in Southampton. But this is the real thing. All over the ship, routines are being started that will shortly be serving passengers. Commodore Gibb, who has waited so long for this moment, is irrepressible. Delight. delight. Absolute delight. Working for a long time for this, and it's, uh, it's fantastic on a, on a nice day like this. At the entrance to Southampton Water, Lord Stirling allows himself to savour the emotion of the occasion. There's rare occasions that one brings in a ship of this standard, and particularly to the United Kingdom. And there's a schoolboy in everybody, frankly. And, you know, with the general atmosphere, the, the crew on board and the crew bar last night, the morale is riding very high, and it's a, it's a, it's a magnificent ship, and it's people that make a ship, and it's very exciting. So uh, all one can say is we're all here together, and coming into his home water, coming into Southampton, is particularly special, all the acknowledgement from the other ships. As I say, you'd have to, there'd have to be something missing in you not to find the excitement. Southampton, which knows a thing or two about shipping, turns out to greet its important new citizen. Just over two years since her keel was laid and with Commodore Gibb in command, the P&O flagship enters her home waters for the first time. A queen arrives at her court to keep an appointment with her queen.